Today I'm going to be giving you my Bosch Rotary Lawn Mower top tips and tricks for getting a good cut and long life out of your machine. And tip one, right off the bat, how to lower your mower height super low. The height of the cut is really easy to adjust using this lever here. Pull the stop out of its holes and move the lever forwards and backwards and the mower adjusts its height at the front and the rear. So I've now got it set on its lowest, but what if the lowest setting isn't quite low enough for you? This is very easy to do. Use a screwdriver to hold the blade so that it can't go round, and with a 13mm socket or spanner, undo the screw in the middle of the blade and lift the blade off. Don't lose the little dust cap. Get yourself a couple of M8 washers or spacers. This is a 3mm thick spacer. Put it on the screw and refit the blade. Use the same screwdriver method to tighten the screw down. I wouldn't recommend using a spacer any thicker than three, even if your lawn is rather flat. If your lawn isn't perfectly flat, two millimeters might be better. Whilst we've got the machine upside down, be sure to keep the blade nice and sharp along at least the last 50 millimeters or so of its length here, one each end. If the blade's taken any damage from hitting stones or bits of wood in your grass, with a flat file, just hold the blade still and just take the burrs off the top edge first. Holding the blade still again and the machine still, perhaps use your foot, just file the edge down at a slight angle from underneath. It doesn't have to be razor sharp, although actually this is pretty good. But if you do that, each time you cut, it'll keep the blade in good condition and you'll get a nice cut. A much nicer cut than if the blade's blunt. A blunt blade will tend to tear at the grass rather than cut through each, each piece. Try and avoid constantly stopping and starting the motor. Particularly at the end of a straight run across your garden. Unless of course your garden's about 10 acres and a straight run is like 100 metres. Something I know from my work with motors in the uh, automotive industry, motors for door latches for central locking, uh, window regulators and seats, is that the lifetime of a motor can be very much dictated by the number of times that the motor is started. Every time you start the motor, it puts the motor under a bit of extra strain. If you keep starting the motor, hundreds and thousands of times it will shorten its life. So at the end of a run keep the motor going, spin the machine round in the opposite direction quite quickly and carry on. That way you avoid stopping and starting the motor too often and help to increase its useful lifetime. It's also not so annoying on your ears and your brain having hearing a motor constantly stopping and starting. Oh drives me bananas. If you need to use an extension lead to be able to reach all the extremities of your garden, avoid buying an extension lead that's way too long, especially if you're going to get one of these cassette reel types. And if you do use a cassette reel type of extension lead, make sure to uncoil it every time you use it, because if you leave them coiled up, they can uh, overheat and catch fire. Preferably either buy or make an extension lead just long enough that you can reach all extremities from the places you can plug in. Use a tough rubberized socket at one end and a tough rubberized plug at the other. And make sure that the cord is good quality, preferably rubberized sheath and has a cross-sectional area on the conductors of at least 1.25 millimeters. Another issue with using extension leads of course is that the longer the extension lead you get a voltage drop down the extension lead and the original machine cord when it's in use and if your extension lead is way too long then the voltage drop could be way too much and that in turn will strain the motor. In fact you could even burn the motor out doing that. Personally I prefer a plain extension lead without the cassette that way you don't have to drag a cassette around with you everywhere you go and I can wind it up on my arm and I can store it with the lawnmower. That way I always know where it is even if I need it for something else. This next tip is very important because this concerns safety. Whatever sort of power tool or electrical device you're using, 
whether you're using it outside or inside always 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 please plug it into a socket that is protected by an RCD known as a GFCI in the USA check to see if the consumer unit in your house has got an RCD inside it which protects the socket circuits if it has great if it hasn't buy a plug-in RCD so that you can at least protect the device you're using with one those little plastic boxes cost less than 20 quid and honestly they can save your life as an ex-electrician sorry but this is kind of one of my soapbox subjects <laughs> and it's not worth not having one for what they cost a few beers down the pub will cost you more than one of these if you'd like me to do a video to show how an RCD works and why they're such lifesavers despite being so cheap say so in the comments and if there's enough interest I'll do a video on them tip number number I've lost count tip number whatever it is sometimes it can't be avoided but as much as possible try and avoid cutting the grass when the grass is wet when the grass is wet the cuttings have a tendency to clump up around the cavity here the blade runs in the compacted grass that's stuck to the side and then that causes the motor to struggle to make the blade go around you'll also find that when you, if this happens that as you're mowing along every few moments or so you'll get clumps of grass coming out from under your mower that are not being blown back into the collection box but if you can't avoid it and this does happen stop regularly and use a scraper to get the grass out of the uh, underside earlier models came with a scraper just for this purpose if you haven't got one of these an old wooden spatula from the kitchen will do nicely or even a new wooden spatula they're only a couple of quid you'll also find that the grass clumps up on the wheel at the back here so scrape that off regularly as well cutting when the grass is wet is also bad for the grass no matter how sharp it is even if it is razor sharp the blade will tend to tear at all the individual pieces of grass and rip them rather than cutting them cleanly which makes for a, a less visually pleasing cut and is also bad for the grass itself the grass likes a nice clean cut which can then heal easily the wet grass issue links into this next tip quite uh, nicely as well wet grass is quite a lot heavier than dry grass because of the water that's on the outside of the blade all the water droplets and as the grass box begins to fill up the grass box starts to get heavier and the and the machine itself starts to tilt backwards not only that but when you take the uh, box off it can become quite heavy to handle so if you've got arthritic hands for example that can, that can become quite difficult so my tip whether the grass is dry or wet is empty the box when it's about a half to two thirds full don't leave it till it's stuffed full and continuing the theme of wetness these machines are not waterproof <laughs> I know you, you might think that that sounds illogical because it's meant to be used outside but there is actually a warning sticker on this not to leave it out in the rain and in actual fact that's how we ruined our last one it got left out in the rain water got into the motor and it completely knackered the bearings so if you haven't got room in your garden shed or you want to keep it next to your garden shed so that it's handy for use get yourself a lawnmower cover they're dead cheap this one cost me less than 10 pounds delivered the only thing I would say about these is try and, try and get one that's a large size if, if they're sized the ones you're looking at and get and try and try not to lose the drawstring around the bottom so you can keep it on or get one with elastic hoops that you can put around the wheels because it's important it's important to keep this end pulled tight because if water gets into this top bit here that's where it gets into the motor so that's the bit that you want to protect may your new lawnmower live long and prosper if you found this video useful here's another one i think you'll find useful and i shall see you next time